So good morning to all. Uh, today we will see the grillage modeling concept. As for this concept, we can make the number of girders longitudinally and the transverse member wherever actual member is present in the model we can present plus we can make the dummy members to make your load transfer in very closer distance and this is the beginning of the uh, modeling part now this is the software page I am opening a new project file new project and I set my unit to kilonewton meter I am save the model I save the model fine now for the modeling purpose first I have to create the properties I'm starting from properties now properties material add material so I'm creating one material property as per the euro stand as per I will follow the as the standard grade C 4500 I am making the name as a concrete and one more property for reinforcement uh, sorry this is for precious steel steel I am giving the name as a PS selecting one material property but actually this is this property is to be actual as a precious cable manufacturer will provide the property of the cable that one generally we have to provide it fine so in our work we have defined two material properties now next we have to define the section properties fine so for that I am going to the section properties add this is my section property details as we are already familiar with this uh, section property database the first one is the DB user type second is value type sections third is a SRC that is a steel reinforced concrete section and next is the combined section for steel members and then PSE type and then tapered section and composite and then last is steel girders now this grillage model uh, now this project is concerned we are making that I girder composite system as a grillage model so I am selecting the composite I shape now I'm giving the name as a support section and this information yeah, uh, this is as per the reference picture let me take that reference picture yeah this is the reference picture as per the reference picture I'm going to fill the information that is a BC it's our uh, slab width for one composite section that is the three meter I will make it uh, five meter and TC is a slab thickness that is 0 0.25 and HH is zero that is your the gap between the girder and slab generally we are not maintaining the gap between this one which then only it, it will make the composite action so I'm making it a symmetric section and the HL1 uh, the HL1 and HR1 is the 
HL1 is the left side, HR1 is the right side. As we are selecting as a symmetric section, automatically the information what we are filling in the left side, that will consider for the right side cross section. Now the HL1 is 0.2, HL2 is 0.3. And HL3 is 1 meter and HL4 is 0.3, HL5 is 0.2 and then BL1 is the web thickness, it's 0 0.15. Yeah, BL1 it has to be a 0.5 and BL2 is 0.501 and BL4 is 0.5001. What I'm maintaining here at the end section generally we will be providing the T shape and the middle section it will be I shape. To make such a two different cross section I are selecting one same type for the middle section as well as for the support section and in between you will make a taper section. This tapering will be linear tapering in y direction and z direction and this property the cross section of the I mean the taper cross section will be created by the existing property this is the one of the existing property that is your support section. And then, this is the material property for uh, for a slab and girder. This information for slab. ASTM, I am selecting the C4500 and for, sorry, this is for, we can make it less, 3500 and for girder is 4500. And the ratio between the uh, modulus of velocity, it will be calculated by program itself as per the ratio and your centered offset is center top offset so that the, the, the top surface will be uniform. I'm selecting center top offset and click OK and then show calculation result. The program will calculate the property of the section before composite and after composite. Okay and now you are seeing this properties while doing construction stage analysis. The before composite and after composite it will be consider the stiffness of the member with these two parameters that is your before composite and after composite. At the level of construction the first level is only with the girder so only the girder property will be considered for the calculation and second is the composite action will take place that is the stiffness of the girder as well as the slab will be considered so that time this property will be taken into account for the calculation of the stiffness. Okay, fine. Okay, this is the first property I have created. Now click apply. This section property is added. Now the input dialog box is ready for the second cross section. That is your ID is, ID is 2, it is updated automatically and second cross section property I am giving as a mid section. Here the difference is the BL1 is 0.15. When I make a 0.15 the remaining dimensions are same so that I can make the I section which is applying at the middle portion and apply. So, so this is my two section property. And next is a taper section. I am going to make a taper section with the help of the existing properties now. This is a composite 
I type. Now the number of girder we are making three girder center to center distance between the girder is 5 meter and BC is 0.25 and sorry BC is 5 meter and TC is 0.25 that's the slab thickness HH is 0 and then below the size i generally this is considering how we are making the model in the for the element generation how we are going to connect from left side to right side so the starting point is taken as i10 end point is taken as a j10 so that the i10 property it's a starting from left side that is your support section to mid section This is my support section. Import. This property is filled in the table. And the similar way, this is J10, the right side. It is a mid section. This is the property of the section. Import the property. Again, we have to define the material property for a slab and girder. <coughs> this is for the slab. 3500. And for girder is a 4500. Click OK. The property is defined and your offset is center top offset. And the tapering is, is a linear tapering in both the direction that is your Y and Z direction. This is a linear tapering. We have selected. And name is, this is tapering from support to mid apply and fourth one is mid to support and mid to support the difference is the starting point size i is your mid section and j10 is support section the material is same offset is same and click apply the fourth cross section is defined and one more section property that is for the cross girders I'm defining the cross section of the diaphragm section is a solid rectangle that is your cross beam or cross girder whatever the name you can give you can give it and here is the depth is kept as uh, 1.5 and B is 0.3 offset is the same as center top offset vertical offset is user defined you have to divide I have to detect the slab thickness so it is minus 0.25 from the extreme fiber and click OK and click OK. So totally we have defined the five cross sections. Now we are going to create the geometry now. Yeah. Uh, and the material property wise so in between the diaphragm sections I'm going to use the dummy members. How to define the dummy, dummy properties in the material? Go to material property. Select concrete material, ASTM. See, 4500. I'm giving the name as dummy. The property is displaying here in the table. Once the database and the standard is selected, again you make it none, then this value will be editable. Once the value is editable, then make it weight density is zero. Once we kept the weight density is zero, that means the 
only the cross-sectional stiffness will be there, but basically it will not take any load on that. This is the dummy properties and click OK. So three different properties we have defined now and click OK. Uh, next is geometry. Go to node and element, create node. I'm creating at the node at the origin point. This is my land view. X is longitudinal, Y is transfer direction. And first point at the origin point. Two more times I'm copying with a distance of 5 meter in my Y direction. Click OK. Now you're seeing three nodes over there. Three nodes you're seeing in the screen. Now, how I'm going to project it. We can copy the node further and connect by the element. While connecting, we are defining the what is the material property and what is the cross what is the cross section property for the particular member. In another way, we can generate by using extrude command. I'm introducing this command now. It's the extrude, and the extrude we have three type of extrusion. If you have a node, node to line element. If you have a line element, you can line line element to planar element. If you're having planar element, the planar to solid elements also there. So three type of extrusion, we can make it by using the extrude command. So as we have only nodes, so I'm using node to line element. This is my material property, and this is my cross section property. So first section I'm selecting as a support section. I'm selecting unequal distance. I'm defining all the dimensions in the X direction, so I'm selecting X. The first one is, is 2 meter. Suppose I'm having the support section length of the member is 2 meter. Select all the nodes, 1, 2, 3. This is a node to line element. I have defined material and cross section. And given the element length also, I can just click directly apply. Now you are seeing the support section is created with a length of 2 meters. Again, the node number 4, 5, 6, I am selecting it. This is my support to mid section. It's a tapering section. This is my 3.5 meter. Or we can make it 3 meter. Yeah. It's a 3 meter. Apply. Now you are seeing the taper section on the screen. And again I am selecting, it is my mid section. Mid section. I'm selecting the node number seven, eight, and nine. I'm giving the distance of two times five meter. Apply. Now we are seeing this is my mid section is generated. Similarly, the node number 13, 14, 15, I am selecting it. This is my again mid to support. This is my 3 meter. Again, node number 16, 17, 18. This is my support section. That is the length of the member is 2 meter. So now you are seeing the taper section, how the taper section is generated. This is the way. It's a linear tapering. Fine. And then we have to define the cross section at all the locations. Okay. 
now I'm using the create element option and this is the material this is the cross section that is your cross beam option I'm selecting the node over here this is my actual cross girder locations and in between I want to connect dummy members to make my smooth connectivity I'm just changing the material properties to dummy section is same cross beams I'm connecting in between the locations also So now this is the grillage model is created. Now you can see in the work tree, double click. This is my support section is highlighting here. This is my mid section. This is my support to mid section, mid, mid to support section. This is my cross beams and section wise is all our cross beams. And this is the only members which the dummy properties is assigned to the member. Now, next is a support condition. Select the node number 1, 2 and 3 as well as on the right side. One, two, and three on the right side 19 20 21 these are the support nodes I am copying this nodes go to node and element translate translating in Z direction that is my minus 2 meter okay it's here now actually it has to be a two to the girder depth is 2 meter and the slab thickness is 0.25 so I have to copy the node which is 2.25 so now you can see it, it is exactly below the girder location now we have to connect these two member by links and I'm copying one more time this bottom nodes to make the modeling for the bearing pad that is your 0.25 distance It is minus 0.25. It's copied now. Now what you have to do next is a uh, we have to connect the support nodes with the structure nodes. So next portion is a boundary condition. Defines support. So pin support I am providing so that all the translations are fixed at the left side. The bottom most node is my support nodes on the right side is a roller support and now you can see the support condition what I have provided at the bottom most nodes these are the nodes where I have applied the support condition and now I have to connect this st st structure node to support nodes that is your elastic link it's a rigid type and copy elastic link you can find out the distance by using query the distance between these two nodes is 20 meter so making it x is 20 meter and here the two node connectivity it is my You can see the elastic link will be appear here. The same way at the middle girder and the edge girder. 
So totally we have 12 elastic links and 6 support condition because we have 3 girders. Now next is the load. So what are the loads we can provide that is for the structure? The first one is the static load. Static load cases. First we have to define the load cases that is your my self weight. Load type is dead load. Add I'm giving is cross barrier load that is a uh, name a generator is a CB. This is a dead load of component and atta attachments. Add and wearing surface that's the wearing code WC. Wearing surface load is load type is defined. And next is a pre-stress load. Load type is pre-stress and add and close. So we have defined four load cases now. Now we are going to apply one by one. The first one is a self weight. Go to self weight. The self weight load case. Z is vertical, so Z is minus one. Add. And next is a beam load element reference. This is my cross barrier load. I'm following the eccentricity from the offset location. This is the cross barrier, so which I have to apply at the edge of the girder. Now we are seeing this is my exterior girder. So this I have selected. And my eccentricity is 5 meter. This is my load value. Minus 2.5 kilonewton per meter. Apply. And similarly, I am selecting the left side girder. This is offset is minus 5 meter. Apply. Now we can the work tree. You can see the load which is applied at the edge of the girders. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Actually, total girder length is uh, 5 meter, so it has to be half of the length, that is 0.25. I will just uh, show how to edit in the table. The first is a negative value, this is a positive value. This is minus 2.5. Copy paste, this is to positive 2.5. Fine. Now you can see the model, it's corrected now. Now this is the, the uh, cross barrier load which is applied at the edge of the slab. Next is the wearing surface load. Select the load case is wearing surface. For wearing surface there is no eccentricity. Directly we can apply the load on the members. Suppose it's a minus 1.5 kN per meter. Because it's a line model so we are calculating the wearing surface load which is transferring for the per meter length. So select all the members, apply. So this load is applied. This you can see. This is a varying surface load which is applied. So next is the pre-stress load. So the pre-stress load, what are the procedure to apply the pre-stress load? Go to load, temperature and pre-stress. We have three steps for that. First one, we have to define the tenant property. So tenant property, add, so define the property for this, 
I'm giving the name as tendon. I'm selecting post tensioning, post -tensioning type and the material, selecting the material. And total tendon area, here I have to select what is the standard strand diameter from the list and number of strands per cable. So 19 number of strands and 12.7 mm dia of strands. So this is the total tendon area and duct diameter is 0.09 that is about, uh, 90 millimeter and relaxation coefficient as per we can follow any standard I am following the CBFIP for a 5 percentage for low relaxation cable uh, because this is a high tensile wire as well as the uh, ultimate strength, yield strength, curvature friction factor is just taken from the standard and anchor slip is a 6 millimeter is considered now. Click OK. And next one is I have to create the cable coordinate for this input. Next is cable profile. This cable profile, this is the cable profile data and giving the name as a T1, tendon cable 1 and the property is a tendon and the element is where you want to apply. I am selecting the first girder. So this coordinate I am going to apply for the first girder. So I selected the first girder. Input type is 3D and reference axis from the element location and the coordination of the cable uh, first I will be creating the coordinates in Excel sheet So three cable I'm going to define. And first coordinate is zero, y zero. It is from minus point five. So total length of the girder is 20 meters. I'm calculating the coordinates for 10 meter. So this is the three cable coordinates which I have created that is for the off the length that is over 10 meter. So first cable I am coordinate I am just copying paste it in the cable coordinates make symmetric starting point of the tendon is from my element number 1 so I am entering the element number is 1 apply it's created now you can see the cable profile like this. This is on the girder one. This is on the girder one. And 
next is a change the coordinate so the cable name is t2 and remove the existing coordinates again copy the second cable coordinate for the input and paste it make symmetric and apply and next cable is t3 remove the cable coordinates go to excel sheet copy the cable number 3 give the input make symmetric and apply so we have created the three cable in the first girder so we have created three cable in the first girder okay now for the second and third girder how we can make it with the easy way is we can just select all the tendon copy and move equal distance 0, 0,5 comma 0 that is your distance between the girder so click apply now you can see now we have six cables totally so we have copied for the second girder, uh, second girder also now one more time we are going to do that is for the third girder that is your 0, 10, 0 apply now you can see totally we have nine cables over that these are the cable which is present in the model okay fine so next is the tendon pre-stress select the load case name is pre-stress and select all the tendon select this is selected list the stress value is force or stress type is I'm selecting force type jacking type is both in jacking this is the force which we are applying at the both the ends I'm changing the unit to ton I'm applying 250 ton on both the sides grouting after one stage that is a one construction stage click OK add and close so now you can see sulfate is applied crossberry is applied wearing surface is applied so tendon force also applied this is the force which is displaying in the model now we can see clearly this is a force present in the cable okay in general we have to do the construction stage analysis for such kind of a grillage model so that the program will calculate the effect in under construction only for the girders and second step is girder and slab for that we have to create the groups and then apply okay and the construction stage analysis has to be done for this model this is the groups structure group right click create this is my girder add this is my cross beams add all the cross beams including dummy members I'm giving only one group name for that and boundary group right click this is my support and second is links to so the two groups for the boundary conditions we are defined next is a load group 
the first load is sulfite and cross barrier wearing coat and pre stress okay so we have defined the group but we have not assigned to the model now we will assign one by one so this is the basic uh, basic geometry and this is the main girder group i am selecting only the main girder and drag and drop so that this main girder comes under this group whenever i am activating this uh, group automatically the main girder will be appear at the particular construction level next is a cross beams these are my cross beams and drag and drop and next is the support condition these are the nodes i have applied okay sorry uh, i'm changing the view so these are the bottom nodes where i have applied the support condition drag and drop the support it automatically assign and similarly these are the nodes assign the links okay how to justify it whether i have applied correct or not go to work right click on the support go to table we can see the group name is filled as a support and similarly for the link right click go to table the last one the group name is links and next is the load case load case also we have to assign according to the group right click this is the one which we created and select the load group is self weight and click modify so this is it is getting modified now and similar way this is the load case for cross barrier and wearing surface so this is up to this is the wearing if this is a cross barrier now we can see the load case name is a cross barrier now here i have to define this is my cross barrier and just above that i have to copy and modify it is modified now and the remaining members are my wearing surface just copy select the column paste it it's getting modified now now what is the purpose of for defining the groups in the construction levels only the group name will be appear individual members or individual load case name will not appear in the activation of the construction stages fine similarly for the precess load just go to table this is the precess again select the precess load all our precess load group only name is same only precess fine now next is a construction stage information load construction stage define construction stage add construction stage 1 stage 1 cs1 duration of the first construction stage is 30 days only the main girder is activating with the distance of with the age of 10 days add it's added boundary condition support and links both are activated with the original conditions and load is only self weight is added at the first stage of the first construction stage yeah. 
and then the priestess load which is activating at the 10th day of the first construction stage I'm adding the number of days is here and because by default the activation it will show first day and last day if you want to activate any load between the first and last day of the particular construction stage that day you have to enter here then it will apply here select the activation day select the load case click add this is my first construction stage information click apply next is a CS2 same 30 days member I'm activating the cross beams at the age of 10 days and then boundary conditions already activated so directly go to the loads that is your viewing surface and cross barrier so cross barrier and viewing surface both are activating at the first day of second construction stage add and apply and my third construction stage for calculation of a long term loss 10,000 days and click OK so that yeah this is my stage 3 yeah so this is the construction stage information which is defined over there now what is the information is additionally we have to provide to calculate the precious losses the creep and shrinkage and compressive strength information we have to define as the time dependent material properties how to define that I'm changing the unit to Newton millimeter go to properties time dependent material property for a creep and shrinkage add I'm giving the name as C and S for creep and shrinkage I'm following CBFIP or European standard you can select accordingly my strength of concrete FCK value is 45 Newton per mm squared and the relative humidity is 70 percentage and notion of size of member you can calculate as per the formula and then the type of aggregate is a we can select here limestone or sandstone or quartz I'm selecting as a basalt dense limestone aggregate and show calculation result this is my creep coefficient and shrinkage strain values and click OK and next is a compressive strength so define compressive strength add compressive strength parameters CBFIP it is FCK plus delta F that is a 50 Newton per mm square read the graph this is a compressive strength variation along the time and click OK it's defined in your work tree generally these are the work what we have done for this project that will be listed in this table in this table if any text is showing in blue color that means that functionality is not completed or otherwise we have defined but not associated with the model file that is the meaning of the color pattern which is displaying in your work now the creep and shrinkage and compressive strength are showing in blue color that means this function is not yet completed so when it will be complete we have to connect this creep and shrinkage and compressive strength with the material property so go to material link select creep and shrinkage and compressive strength along with the concrete property click OK add and close now you can see your function is completed
define. And it's one more thing is we have not to define the live load. Okay, the live load generally uh, it will not contribute on the construction analysis because and the type of construction we are not allowing the vehicle to move. So anyhow, we have to define the moving load analysis. I will show the procedure for that. So this is comes under load, moving load. Select the standard first. As well as FD, traffic line lanes. Add the line. I am giving the name as the lane one. Now the unit is in millimeter. So here I can change the unit to any time. I am changing to kilo newton meter. Now the my input is in meter now. So SNST is a 2 meter and my vehicle load distribution from the one main girder to another main girder which is through cross beams. That's why we have created the dummy members. So select the cross beam, select the group name is cross beam and your lane definition select from here to here and apply. Again define lane 2 which we consider the 2 lane it is minus 2 meter remove the existing cable I mean uh, the points and select one more time and apply One minute, it's replaced over there. I'm just defining the one more time. Lane 1, yes, intensity is a 2 meter. Wheel spacing is the same. The vehicle load distribution is cross beam. From here to here, apply and change the name to lane 2. Remove the existing points. SND is minus 2. Select one more time. So we have defined two lanes over there. And you can see the lanes definition over here. You can see the two lanes in the model. And next is the vehicle definition. Select the vehicle load. Add standard. Is that the well LRFD? I am selecting 93 TRK and dynamics load allowance 30 percentage. And click apply. And second load is 93 TDM. Apply. Okay. So we have selected two standard vehicle. Uh, next is the moving load cases. We are creating the moving load cases for that. So giving the name as moving load case MBC. And you want to select your subload case is the individual component or the combined one. Let's take the combined effect on the structure and I'm selecting this vehicle minimum load is 1 maximum is 1 with this lane. Lane 1 I'm applying this vehicle and lane 2 93 TRK with a lane 2. So the two vehicle I applied individual lanes and click OK and one more one more load case that is your MVC1. I can check the independent load effect also. Click add. See so this is the vehicle. So minimum number of vehicle <coughs> occupied in one lane. 
so maximum can be both the lanes can be occupied so i'm selecting both the lanes click apply and okay and add one more subload cases this is with 96 trk minimum loader lane is one maximum is two select both the lanes selected click okay so we consider consider the independent effect and both the lanes separately and click okay now the things are completed now now you can and one more uh, this one the vehicle is done the construction stage for the composite section there's one more uh, step is required to differentiate the girder alone and the girder and slab effect so that is there the construction stage for a composite section construction stage this is a composite section for construction stage. This we have to define to differentiate the cases. How? Here we are defining. This is my support section. Here I have to differentiate by element is activated at the activate stage. And the second thing is material wise I have to differentiate this as a another material like for the slab material this is activating at the stage 2 okay so this is the procedure to, to differentiate the things so for that add material I'm selecting 3500 I'm giving the name as a slab Okay, so it is active stage, age of concrete is 10 days. This is my material differentiate for the slab, active stage is CS2. Second stage, I am activating the slab. Apply. And similarly for the midsection, support to meet meet to support material slab again stage 2 age of concrete is 10 days so it is 0.23 apply so now we have defined all the four construction stage we are differentiated with the construction stage for composite section to differentiate this girder how it will appear now you can see these are the three construction stages which we have defined it now, as per the cross section wise, we have selected the cross section as a composite section which is displaying your girder and slab together. When I see after construction stage, let's see CS1, you can see only the girder. So that your analysis condition will be for only the girder condition and stage 2, that is a CS2, that is your girder and slab and cross girders. So the program will you will consider for the analysis this manner we can extract the result in the same way now we can do the analysis This takes 
some time construct stage is completed stiffness matrix computer static okay completed everything okay now I okay, can see the result now the result load combination for concrete design auto generate generate the load combination as per the standard click ok this is the load combination for the service condition as well as for the strength condition and the result wise the reaction for the self weight value, value and legend this is the reaction force is generated for self weight case similar way you can select any load cases or load combination it will calculate the reaction forces and also when you check the reaction forces in stage one you can see the reaction forces only for the girder the similar way we can check the result for all the conditions like displacement shear force bending moment everything this is only with girder stage 2 is girder and slab and for the forces forces beam diagram m y is the bending moment this is the bending moment shape for all the individual girders similarly f z is the shear force and m x is the torsion and finally the stresses beam stresses we can check the stresses now okay this is the analysis result this result can be extracted by the table also go to result table beam forces select the load cases or load combinations click ok you will get this force extraction table this table you can just save it in a dynamic report table dynamic report table save it and this picture also you can save it as a dynamic report image like that and then as we are doing the precess member so we can extract the result for the precess losses precess tendon loss this is the loss for the cable number 1 that is the t1 and cs1 stage 1 this column is showing the remaining stress in the member after friction and slip this is elastic deformation creep and shrinkage and relaxation we can change the construction stage for that we can check the result for every construction stages for the same cable or you can change the cable name also t1 t2 t3 so the program will calculate your precious loss accordingly again this table you can export to excel sheet also or you can save this information as a dynamic report image and for the moving load cases we can extract the moving load maximum condition we can see the here mb max this is your moving load condition max this is the maximum moment over there and how to influence the vehicle location that is a moving load tracer for maximum moments suppose i want to check get the maximum over here trace it this is my vehicle positions the program is calculating the moving load analysis as per the influence line diagram method so it will be very accurate as well as you can extract your information for maximum bending moment or for maximum shear force and maximum reaction for design of supports and finally this is the report generation tools 
this uh, dynamic report generator new document the dynamic report generation is happen in the ms word format this ms word will open in meta civil so what are the pictures tables and graph you have saved in the analysis that will be saved in the report tab which is showing in the tree menu here you can just drag and drop what are the results you have saved here just drag and drop so according to in the same pattern you will get the report generation actually So this is just simple uh, drag and drop option so that the program will generate your informations. This is your section summary. And this is your construction stage information. Once this information is done, you can just save this uh, word file and then further input you can type it in normal word format. Give the name and save the file and you can minimize you can see in the desktop I can see the folder this is the folder nessus so what is the grillage report this is the grillage report Just generating. Let me see. In the meantime, I will just close this. The word file is open now. Now you can see this is the report generation. This is your model file. So now you are seeing this is your software model file. And this is your report generated in Word file.
So this is the modeling and analysis of grillage model and construction stage and result extraction. Do you have any questions? And if you have any doubts, you can contact me. This is my information. You can contact me further for your questions. Okay. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. We will see you in the next webinar. Thank you very much. See you again. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello. If in case, if you are not able to hear my, uh, this webinar, I have recorded this one. I will send the video link for your reference. And please practice in this uh, webinar. And if you have any queries, you can contact me via Skype or my email ID. I will share my email ID also. This is my email ID, Skype ID, my name. You can contact. You can contact me for your further queries. Fine, thank you very much.